Let's take a look at how we can use matrix matrix multiplication via a linear combination of column vectors in the wild. This is example one where we create a modeling matrix A. We say in general it's an M by N. For this example, it's going to be a four by three. The entry by entry definition of this modeling matrix is seen here. Suppose that we want to double column one and leave all other columns untouched. In other words, we want to multiply every entry in column one by two and then not touch column two or three. Remember in this lesson we're developing four different versions of matrix matrix multiplication, one of which is done by columns. I'm going to be helping you develop intuition about how to think about which version we want to use in which context. So to do that, let's go back to the anatomy of matrix matrix multiplication. Here we have our left factor A, which we call an M by P. We have a right factor X, which we call a P by N. And then when we multiply those together, we get an output B, which is an M by N. Remember that we said that when the modeling matrix is in the left argument and we want to do algebraic work using right multiplication, then we can chunk all data into columns. We cut A into columns, we cut X into columns, and we cut B into columns. However, we can reframe that statement and say, to do algebraic work on the columns of our modeling matrix, let's multiply that on the right by an algebraic worker. Remember that in this example, we want to double column one and leave all other columns untouched. And the question that we might ask ourselves is, what type of matrix would allow us to do that? This is where things get super fun because when we talked about dilation matrices, that was one of the operations that I had in mind to guide you through that. So specifically, we're going to make a claim that if we have our modeling matrix A, which in this case is a four by three, and we want to multiply the first column of A by two and leave all other columns untouched, then we can multiply A on the right by the dilation matrix D1, two. If you want more information about that, go back and watch our sequence on outer products and dilation matrices. There's a lot of good content in that playlist. I'll link it in this video for your convenience. So remember that we can do the entry by entry definitions of each of these. Here is our modeling matrix. This is our dilation matrix. To remember that, you have to go back and watch those videos and kind of recall that. And then what we're going to do is calculate the output matrix B. Notice that since we're multiplying A on the right by an algebraic worker, we chop all of this into columns and then take linear combinations of the columns of A with individual entries coming from the columns of our right-hand side matrix. Let's get practice by calculating one column at a time. We'll begin with the first column. Here we're trying to find the first column of the output vector B. To do that, we're going to take column one of the product A times D1 of two. So A times the dilation matrix with the entry two in position one, one. Remember the whole point of an example is to test yourself. See if you can test yourself on what this definition is. Pause the video, do that for yourself. I remember that column one of A times D1 of two is actually A times column one of the right-hand side matrix. Based on our definition of matrix column vector multiplication as a linear combination of columns, we take the columns of A and scale those by the appropriate entry of the first column in our right-hand side matrix. So this is going to be 2 times column 1 plus 0 times column 2 plus 0 times column 3. But remember, 0 times column 2 disappears, 0 times column 3 disappears, and what we're left is just 2 times column 1. In other words, we've just doubled column 1 and put the results in column 1 of our product. Let's keep going and find column 2 of our output. So remember that B is equal to A times the dilation matrix D1 of 2. Column 2 of that product is going to be A multiplied by column 2 of that dilation matrix. If we look back at the definition, we know the entry by entry definition of A, and then column 2 of our dilation matrix, well remember our dilation matrix is just the identity matrix with the jth entry replaced by the letter C. So in this case, the JJ entry is 1, the entry in row 1, column 1, and then we replace that element of the identity matrix with a number 2. So if we're looking at the second column of that identity matrix, that's going to be 0, 1, 0. But now this is a matrix column vector multiplication. We're going to do that via linear combination of the columns, which means we take the first scalar and multiply by the first column, the second scalar and multiply by the second column, the third scalar and multiply by the third column. So that's 0 times column 1 plus 
1 times column 2 plus 0 times column 3. When we multiply any vector by 0, they disappear, and we're left just with 1 times the second column. In other words, this is identical to column 2 of our original matrix A, and that's what we wanted. We wanted column 2 to remain untouched by our product. Let's do the third one. Pause this video and do it for yourself, and then check. Remember, the most important thing is not what I say, but it's what you do. All of this is designed for active learning. So pause the video, do it for yourself. I'm going to run through this for giggles. The third column of our output is column three of the product. Remember that column three of a product is just A times column three of the right-hand dilation matrix. We know the entry-by-entry entry definition of A. We also know that column three of our dilation matrix is 0, 0, 1. When we do this matrix vector product, we take the first entry multiplied by the first column, the second entry multiplied by the second column, the third entry multiplied by the third column, and add up the results. Here, two zeros are there, so those things are annihilated, and we're left with one times the third column. In other words, that is identical to the third column. This is what we wanted because we wanted column three to remain the same, which is exactly what we've accomplished. Let's combine all those results together. So we have this matrix A, which came from a modeling context. We wanted to double the first column of A and leave the other columns untouched. So because we're trying to manipulate the columns, we're going to multiply on the right-hand side and think about taking linear combination of those columns. In other words, we're going to chop A into columns. We're going to chop the algebraic worker matrix that we use into columns. And we're going to chop the output into columns. To double column one, we're going to use a dilation matrix. It dilates a particular column, specifically D12. So we can look at the entry by entry. Here's the matrix A. Here's the dilation matrix. Here's the output. So notice what we do in the dilation matrix is 2 times column 1, 0 times column 2, 0 times column 3. In other words, we've doubled column 1 and not included any contributions from columns 2 or 3, which means that that first column of the output is the doubling that we want. The second column of the output, which is in blue, is going to be 0 times column 1, 1 times column 2, 0 times column 3. I like to think about this like a telescope. I'm focusing in on column 2, and I'm leaving columns 1 and 3 out of it. In particular, I just take one copy of column 2, which means column 2 of the input is identical to column 2 of the output. Once again, for the third column, we take 0 of column 1, 0 of column 2, and we pick off column 3, and then we get that output, which means that this product has the exact form that we want double column one and leave the other two columns identical to the original matrix that we started with. Notice this conforms to the intuition we're going to build. When we want to manipulate the columns of modeling matrix, we multiply on the right by an algebraic worker. Figuring out what type of algebraic worker we want is going to be a fun exploration process that we do from now until the rest of this course. Here, this one double column two. Could you guess what would happen if we wanted to, I don't know, quadruple column three? What matrix would we use to quadruple column three of our matrix A? That leads very nicely into the community challenge of this video. What if we wanted to multiply column one by a half, column two by five, and column three by seven? How could you change the algebraic worker to accomplish such goals? With that, let's end the video. Thank you so much for your attention. In the next video, we'll see how we can swap columns around using the same idea of matrix-matrix multiplication via linear combination of column vectors. I'll see you there.